Hello and welcome to MCC TV International Show. My name is John David. I'm the business coordinator at MCC and also I host this show. As usual, every show is a special show and every show we bring you the best to share their stories with you. And today is no different. Today will be definitely a special show. Uh, it's an honor to host a very special person uh, that a lot of you, our audience, uh, heard her name. Uh, maybe you work with her at some capacity. Uh, before I really mention the name, I would like to say that she is the Muscatine Sister City's Vice President. Uh, she hosted a lot of MCC international students at her house. She took them around, she drove them around. I know they loved her a lot because I, I hear that a lot from our international students. Uh, she opened her house all the time for any Sister City International events. Uh, she graciously uh, give her time to help everybody who needs her help. And with that, I, I basically am honored also to call her a citizen diplomat. Uh, with that, I would say, Ingrid Roh, welcome to the show. I'm very glad to have you with us today. And I'm very glad to sit and listen to your story that you want to share with me and with our audience. So welcome again to the show. Thank you, John. Yeah. Uh, I would like to start by asking you also to briefly introduce yourself, and then we'll take it from there. OK. Well, my name is Ingrid Rowe, and I'm originally from Germany, uh, born in the uh, former, which is now Poland, actually, then escaped to East Germany, grew up in East Germany until I was 13. Uh, my parents and I escaped in 1957, before the wall was built. Then West Germany, I worked for the American Army in the library, met my husband, and that's how I ended up in the U.S. Well, well, lucky to have you with us. Thank you. So, well, Ingrid, I, I think the first thing I want to do here is I would like our audience to get to know your story uh, basically more about, you know, growing up in that part of Poland, moving into Germany, and let's first of all start with that. So growing up, uh, describe that for us. Well, the growing up in the former, uh, which, which is now Poland, I was eight weeks old when my family had to escape, my, my mother and her sister with four young children. So I didn't really grow up there. But we went to the former East Germany, which is now close to our sister city in Mecklenburg. And, um, like I said, I was almost 13 when we escaped before the wall was built. And my childhood was, was very nice. As a child, you don't realize what really goes on politically, uh, you know, in any country for that matter. And uh, all I remember is just having fun like any other child. You know, the school system was very good in East Germany. Uh, politics were not discussed <laughs> at all. So it yeah. was really people to people. Yeah. And I think that's where I learned my compassion for for other people okay. for foreigners uh, and, and 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 basically y you lived in germany till i was almost 13 when 13 left. Yes. when you left germany mm -hmm. uh, now during those times i mean if we take you back well, that's east germany <laughs> not west germany yeah you know, if so. we take you back to those 13 years and you said you know as as a kid that is true uh, in most cases kids would like to go out, play in the streets, play with their friends, I mean, enjoy their life, and, and you know, a lot of things that we as an adult might not even consider, uh, or consider, the kids will be totally the opposite. So, so basically, describe the school. So you said you had good school. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, so, so describe a little bit for us, for example, in the elementary stage, uh, what did you learn? Uh, what kind of subjects that you have to take? Is it like something that you can choose, pick and choose from, or what, what do you? Well, not in elementary school. First of all, we start school at age seven, or back then it may have changed by now, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But um, you start school at age seven, and you have the basics, the reading, writing, arithmetic, uh, as you get uh, uh, move forward in classes, art, music. So really no different than what we're learning here. Here, okay. okay. 
uh, and 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 I assume everything in German. Did you like? Do do they teach languages, for example? Later on, yes. The, there was a division. Not a division is not the right term, but by uh, fifth grade, um, kids are not judged as not, but they kind of are sorted out depending on the ability that they may have down the road. Mm -hmm. And uh, at, usually in fifth grade, we switch to what we call gymnasium, which is a higher education level, which prepares you to go to university if that's what you want. Or back then, I can only speak you know, for, um, uh, for my time, uh, people that were, or uh, students that were more apt for um, um, crafts, okay. like auto mechanics, beauticians, yeah. you know, whatever. Um, they will start or started to work for uh, say an auto mechanic shop or something and learn it and it's a four-year program where you have uh, th theoretical instructions and um, the real thing. Yeah. What do you call that? Practice. <laughs> right, practice. <laughs> they get into right. practical right. applications. Yes. Good. Good. Uh, well, uh, the other the other thing that I would like to talk about, uh, you, you know, I was in uh, Frankfurt in mm -hmm. in May, and I enjoyed uh, my time uh, when I was in Frankfurt. Uh, it's different. You know, uh, mm -hmm. Germany is different. Uh, uh, to me, you know, everything you see in Germany when you are there is uh, done by what I call masters. Right. I mean, by people who know exactly what they are doing. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so take us back to this. I mean, like living in Germany and seeing that, how did you feel? I mean, like... Uh, you know what? Kids weren't any different than we are in any country. And yeah. as a child, I didn't pay much attention to a lot of that. Mm. I was a kid. I played in the sand. I played in the river. I played, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. Um, now that I'm older, I'm very proud of what Germany has done. And, and, and you go a lot to Germany, I, I do. mean, and, and, I and do. visit. Yes. Uh, do, do you still have families there? I have uh, cousins still, and of course a lot of friends, so I go there. And then of course we have our sister city mm -hmm. in the former East Germany, and I'm very proud of that. At that time, well, not talking about it now, at that time, can you summarize the difference between East and West? Uh, because you grew up basically in the East part, right? Then you move into the West. Uh, so tell us some of those well, differences. Uh, the former East Germany, I know we also had relatives in the West. Mm -hmm. And of course, the only communication was by letter, by writing. As a child, I didn't write to anybody. Mm -hmm. But uh, what you heard was uh, people in the East always talked about the Golden West. Because in East Germany, you really did not have a lot of things. The stores were, you had basic foods, mm -hmm. you know, what, what people grew. Uh, if you had, um, say, bananas or oranges in the store, that spread like wildfire. <laughs> and you had lines and yeah. lines of people. Yeah. Yeah. And by the time you got to the store, they were gone. They were gone, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but like I said, I remember that as a very nice childhood. Mm -hmm. And in the, again, the, the adults did not involve the children in the politics, yes. anything and like that's, that. And that's, what's, that's good, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so you moved to West Germany. West Germany. What did you do? Well, uh, we were considered um, refugees in our own country. And again, at, at age 13, you don't pay that much attention, but I know that my parents had a very difficult time uh, and took on any job that was available. My mother had been uh, working in the office, you know, an office bookkeeper. My father was a painter. And um, like I said, the first few years were very difficult. I think like it would be for any refugee, anybody that is moving to a different country. You grow up and you finish your education, mm -hmm. you started to work, mm -hmm. and then you met, you met your other half. Right, well my very first job, I interviewed for the American Army for the library, and not expecting to get hired, I was hired. And that's the rest of the story. That's <laughs> the rest of the story. Well, uh, you know, in a, in a little bit, our producer, Chad Bishop, will start rolling some of the pictures Okay. that uh, would like to share mm -hmm. uh, with our audience. And as we start seeing those pictures on the screen, 
Uh, if you can just like describe what we see so that our audience also will get some sort of understanding, an idea about what they are seeing okay. and at some point in time. And I see Chad put the first picture now. Mm -hmm. So tell us what we see here. Well, right in the middle on the right hand side, you see the word Worms. Worms is a very old town. Um, what people might know about uh, Worms here is that Martin Luther, the reformer, mm -hmm. was uh, tried there. The Diet of Worms. Um, the, actually, the town was built, I shouldn't say built, but uh, 14 BC, the Romans moved in, even though it was already occupied by Germanic people. Mm -hmm. and, um, Worms also has one of the oldest and a very large, had a large um, a Jewish population back then. It has one of the oldest Jewish cemeteries. It is right on the Rhine River and um, lots of vineyards around, lots and lots of history. And don't ask me any historical questions, please. Well, but <laughs> it's good at least to look at a map and see where it's located. Right. And yeah. people may have heard of, oh, and this is, um, Beautiful. Right there, the this is uh, the castle in our sister city, Ludwigslust, in Mecklenburg. And that castle was built as a hunting lodge for a former count, I think, would be the translation. Wow. Oh, wow. Quite Thank modest, right? Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. And that is uh, the bridge over the Rhine River entering into Worms. And I have to tell a funny little story. When my daughter came over with my but actually, we all went with my granddaughter, who was two years old at that time. She looked down and she says, look, Mama, the Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. And again, the bridge with uh, one of the, the cruise boats. Gorgeous. It's a beautiful Go town. Beautiful, it really is, yeah. yeah. And another view of Worms. We used to have a... Um, a bar restaurant right on the river uh -huh. that we used to go to all the time as uh, as teenagers. Yeah, yeah, wow. And that is City Hall of Ludwigslust, our sister city. Our sister city. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of the things that I'm really proud of is the the preservation of all the old buildings that that's, everybody that's has. That's beautiful. Just I gorgeous. Mean, oh, one of my favorite people right there. Not counting myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell us that who is in that picture with you. That is uh, Shaima. She is from Egypt, Cairo, Egypt. And she was one of my um, charges, if you will. And she and I just really bonded. She is just an she, outstanding young person. And she's coming in April to visit yeah, again. One of MCC International students. Yes. One of the, a lot of students that you hosted right. and you yeah. held and you... Yeah moved around, so millions of thanks. And that was at Christmas time when they helped me and, and um, yeah, helped me decorate their first Christmas tree. The first Christmas uh -huh. tree, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And here we have Humera, and that was, of course, at Thanksgiving, as you can tell. And Humera is from Pakistan. And I'm still in touch with, with quite a few of the students. I really miss them. I mean, oh, I, I mean, too. they were unbelievable, yeah. great were students wonderful. at MCC. They were yeah. yeah, yeah, And these two young men, former students, and quite frankly, I cannot remember the names right now. I'm sorry, that's old age. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We had a, that was at the one of the diversity days in the college. Diversity, and, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And there is again uh, Shaima, my granddaughter Quinn, and Humira, and this was at the mall when they still had the little tea shop there. So we had an English tea at that time. And that is uh, our German um, visitor group from uh, Ludwigslust, and that's um, a few years ago now. A few years ago, yeah. Wow. Well, those are beautiful pictures. Thanks a lot for sharing that as part of telling your story and sharing your story with everybody. Uh, now, what I want to do is uh, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, you moved to the United States. Uh, you became very involved at some point in time with Sister City Mission, with Sister City Organization. And you started, as we said before, you know, you started to uh, uh, help 
a lot of MCC international students. You take them around. If they need someone to take them to the mall to buy some things, you, you will take them. You hosted them in your house. You do a lot like that uh, with even sister cities, visitors from different countries and not necessarily just from Germany. Uh, the, the question is why? Why Ingrid is doing all this? That's a good question. Um, I think part of it has to do with the way I grew up. Mm -hmm. Having moved a lot from one country, even within the same country, Germany to West Germany, totally different in many ways. Customs were the same, but different type of lifestyle. Uh, then coming here to the US was a big adjustment. And, uh, but actually, one of the reasons I do this as a child in East Germany, our apartment was overlooking the barracks of the Soviet, or the, back then the Russian soldiers, mm -hmm. the common soldier. And um, even as a child, I felt not sorry for them, but I couldn't understand why they weren't allowed out of the barracks, except when they went to you know, marching or whatever they did. And on the weekends, I would sit on the windowsill and watch them with their balalaikas and their accordions and their dances and how much fun they had. And then we had one experience in the winter time. We had a little hill by the river that we would go sledding. And there were two Russian soldiers. And how they got out, I have no idea. But they came and pulled us up the hill and pushed us down and up and down and up and down. Okay. And the next thing I knew, the next few days, I learned that they had been punished for being for doing that. For doing that. Mm -hmm. That's all I remember. But I remember thinking they didn't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. They had fun. And then as I got older and I could see the, I don't even know how to express that, but the unacceptance of the unknown. Mm -hmm. Like if you're a little bit different. You're not accepted easily, and you have to work very hard to become part of that group or that nation. And, um, and I spent my career in the travel industry, so I traveled. I have traveled quite a bit all over the world. And I just have learned that people are more alike than we all think we are. A human being. Human being. Exactly. A human you know, being. and um, cultures, religion, all of that should have very little to do with how we feel about other human beings. Yeah. Yeah. And that is how, you know, it's just natural. And that's how you get involved. That's and just and uh, do you think MCC made it more, or I don't want to say more, do you think MCC made it easier for you to get connected to different cultures through the international students? Well, yes. But don't forget, I had done this before. You know, I had uh -huh. traveled all over. And um, the reason I got into it, I had my mother, who came to live with me in, uh, from Germany. And you met her yeah. at age 70. When we moved to Muscatine, I was trying to find some German connection for her, because she spoke very little English. So um, and then, of course, well, I learned more about, well, that's how I contacted sister cities, hoping that I would find some Germans. Mm -hmm. And surprise, surprise, there weren't any Germans in there. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and I remember asking, as I learned about Muscatine and the German history, my question to you, I think, was, how come we don't have a German sister city? And you said, well, if you want one, go get one. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> get one, and we did, and we have a strong and good relationship yeah. with that city. Yeah. So, um, and definitely the, the international student um, program is fantastic. I think we need more of that. I will, let's hope that we'll get mm -hmm. more of And vice versa, you know, to in, send yeah. our, which I know is happening, but to send our students yeah. overseas wherever they can go, because it just opens the horizon. Uh, you, you know, it's, it's really, I always tell people, you know, uh, you can learn more about your own self and your own country mm -hmm. while you are away from that country rather than while you are exactly. living in that country. Exactly. And, and, and I find it very true even with myself when, when I travel a lot. I mean, I'm learning more about myself 
while I'm away from mm -hmm. home than when I'm exactly home. Exactly right. And, and I'm sure, you know, talking to all these international students at MCC, I mean, and it, it just like, it's true. It's a true story that, you know, students are learning about their native countries mm -hmm. when they are here. Exactly. And, and, and people like you made it also much easier on them because, you know, when someone leaves their family, they leave their friends behind, and they come to a place that is not known to them. Right. Uh, if, they, if they don't have that support system, those people like you, for example, and others who are helping them, uh, adjusted, mm -hmm. getting adjusted mm -hmm. to that. It, it, uh, my understanding, and I think it will be much difficult for, for them to, to adjust, and uh, here at MCC, you know, I always say, you know, international students adds a lot of color Absolutely. to the environment that we have mm -hmm. here at MCC. Uh, so tell us a funny story, if you have a funny story about, for example, some of those international students from MCC, when they came to your house, let's say, and sat down to have a meal. For example, you, you mentioned through the pictures that it was their first time decorating a Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. so did they, I mean, how was it? Describe that moment. Oh, they were just, I, well, we all put the tree up together and I said, okay, it's all yours. Go decorate because I've done it for years and years and I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and they had a wonderful time yeah. doing that, you know, yeah. pulling out all the, and I had a little story for all the little um, ornaments and things like that. And um, as far as food is concerned, they cooked some wonderful meals for me. I wish I could repeat them, but uh, <laughs> it's just a little bit this, a little bit that, you know. Uh, just very informal, I think, just to, to share your daily life. Uh, the funny stories I have is everybody wanted to ride my, my lawn mower, the riding mower, and especially Shima. <laughs> she had a ball on that thing. It's fun. Now, right? Oh, I know, I know. And, and the boys, too, you know, that's yeah. what they wanted was yeah. the machinery. Yeah. So I'm yeah. at the work. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, that's good. And we had, that is we good. just had a wonderful, so really very informal, like, um, and my daughter has had them over and just include them in your family. That's yeah. all. Yeah, that is, that is, oh. and it does make it, I mean, it's a simple thing, but it does make a huge difference exactly. on each one of right. them. Right, right. Okay, so now, um, Sister City. What does it mean to you? Oh, to me, it means, again, the human connection. Okay. It means peace. It means understanding, trying to understand different views, accepting different views. Don't have to agree, but at least listen to each other listen to and each don't other. judge. And that's how it starts. Exactly. Once, once people get together, sit, look. Right at each other and started to right. listen to each other and respect each other, exactly. I mean, all these problems will go away. That's definitely. at least what I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 and it is, it is uh, uh, I, I think uh, w one of the things that I want to mention to the audience uh, is because of where you stand on all these issues and uh, because of uh, that beliefs, which basically the belief of uh, bridging uh, uh, some sort of an understanding among people and of different cultures, of different backgrounds and so on. Uh, for the audience, I mean, uh, Ingrid Rohr uh, received the, uh, the uh, award from Muscatine Sister Cities, uh, what, around three years ago, maybe? Perhaps I three, four years ago? I believe so, yeah. yeah and uh, for all her efforts and work on, again, uh, bringing people together of different cultures, of different uh, backgrounds, and, and race, race, and so on. And, and for that, Ingrid, I mean, y you know, uh, your story is always very inspirational in story. You know, uh, you know, when people hear that, you know, Anybody can do it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it really, it's, it, it takes just what I would call courage, maybe, and determination so that, that we, we can uh, become all ones and, and, and look at each other and, and be, you know, treating each other with mm -hmm. uh, dignity and respect. Um, Ingrid, what, what else would you like to share with us? I usually, you know, towards the end of the show, I usually give uh, uh, my guests 
around a minute to two minutes, uh, free time. That's your free time. You can say whatever you want to say. You can talk about your food, your favorite food. You can talk about your favorite movie. You can talk about whatever you want. Uh, so a minute to two minutes uh, will be yours. John. <laughs> Am I putting you on the spot here? You're putting me on the spot. Yeah. That's kind of a hard one to do because sometimes I just feel I do whatever happens. I don't make any big plans. I, I just kind of go with the flow. Mm -hmm. And um, I've had a lot of fun in life, especially living in so many different places and meeting so many different people. And, um, and that's not about to change. I, I wouldn't even know where to. I'm enjoying living in Muscatine a great deal. I've been here for going on 14 years now. And I consider this to be my third real home, because when I first came here, I went to Michigan, which I love. But my daughter lives here, so I moved here from Chicago to, to be close to family. And um, I still work part-time and um, work with people that need help. So you are keeping um, yourself busy, right? I'm keeping busy. I can't quite see myself sitting at home watching TV all day. so. No, I, I cannot see you also doing that. And I've made sense. some wonderful friends. Muscatine is a wonderful little town. I really like being here, and especially all the friends I've made and the people I've gotten to know, Good. including you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Ingrid. Um, as we always say, you know, uh, we try to bring the story, uh, the story of people who can make a difference in our daily life to you, uh, to your house, uh, to your home, uh, so that we can share it with you and with your family. Uh, hopefully, uh, our uh, show today made a huge difference on you, on each one that you know, uh, because just sitting and listening to Ingrid's story, it's, it's definitely, you know, a very inspirational story that, what, you know, I feel like, okay, well, maybe I'm not doing enough, so let, let's, let's go and do more. Uh, so, but that's, that's definitely, you know, that's what we heard uh, from Ingrid. That's what we heard, what I call a great story from Ingrid that she decided to share with us and how she decided to volunteer part of her time again to help those people who are in need, whether they are international students at MCC here or maybe people here in Muscatine or the Muscatine Sister Cities program. So as I always say, if you have any question and or comments for me, you can call me at 288-6064, or you can email me at jdebeat at eicc.edu. Till next time, Muscatine, bye-bye. <laughs>